Hey guys, I hope everyone's having a fantastic morning. Um, I've had a... <sighs> Let's put it this way. The past couple days have been extremely interesting, rough, fantastic, horrible, and just overall just a lot. Um, This is going to be a real life application of how things go in the church. And I, I'm hes hesitant to even make this video. Um, but I feel like it is the truth. And I feel like the truth needs to be told. So me and a buddy of mine who I used to be really close to um, had a conversation. And I was telling about how, at the time, I was in a relationship with a, a non-Christian who I care and love very much. And he's, he didn't feel like giving me any advice because he didn't have any advice. But he did have a book that he suggested that I read. And he asked me if he bought it for me and sent it to me, would I read it? And I said yes, at the time. Um, and I, I meant it. I don't just say yes for no reason. If people send me things that are going to help, I'm going to read it. He sent me said book, and I read like the beginning of the book, and then it stopped. Um, why? To be honest, I've been focused on other things lately. Either at the time, job, or preparing for my marriage with Tanya, preparing for the wedding. There were a lot of things at the time. Too many things. And I had to take care of myself. And my fiance won't go through it. Um, at one point, about a month in, he sent me a message. He was wondering, how was how is it going? How is the book reading going? And I told him, well, I started reading a little bit, but unfortunately at this time, for this foreseeable future, I'm not gonna be reading the book. He misunderstood. It was a miscommunication on my end, apparently, and misunderstanding on his end. And he then tried to pick a fight, demanding money, demanding the book back, demanding that I do what he felt I needed to do. And my reaction was, nope, not happening. Piss off, no, <laughs> it's a gift. I'm gonna read it just on my own time. And it got out of hand to a point where he and I went silent for a couple of weeks. At one point he did reach out to me, I reached out to him, we, we talked. Um, at this point I was looking or sorry, look working at Snow Joe's. So as I'm cleaning the floor to the scrubber, we're on the phone, we talked, we forgave each other, and we let the situation go. But unfortunately, during that conversation, I opened my mouth and told him that I was in communication with a couple people about what has been going on with me and this, this guy. And the Bible is very clear that if you have an issue with a brother, talk to the brother. If he does not listen, talk, bring in a friend. If, if he still doesn't listen, go to the church. If he doesn't listen at that point, leave him alone, have nothing to do with him, move on with your life. And I did exactly those things in that order. Um, I then went on social media, meaning YouTube, made videos about the situation, told the truth about what happened, and he did not like that at all. Um, in fact, he called it gossiping. He called it being a coward and not being able to tell to him, to him directly, which I did multiple times, and I've done it. He never listens. This, this person never listens. Then he and I just stopped talking. We blocked each other out of our, each other's lives, and we moved on for about two months of silence. During those two months, I would pray for him. I would wrestle with some of the videos he would post. I would carefully listen and watch his his, his his social medias and learn from a little bit about how he would go about his channel. And then something unexpected happened. Last week, he came back to my life briefly. 
And I'm not doing this video to blackmail or to bully or even bring out who he is. Um, he has asked that I do not mention him by name or his channel. He also mentioned asked me not to talk about the situation at all. And the truth is, I was talking to one mentor and there is freedom of press. And there's freedom of speech. And I have freedom to be able to talk about this. But I'm going to go about this in a way that's godly, biblical, and I want to help others work through whatever demons they're going through in their lives. Truth is, he's a good friend of mine. He's someone that I care about dearly. He's someone that I love to death. He is someone I struggle with because our language barrier, meaning our communication, and our the way we see the world and the way we see God and the way we see things spiritually are different because he comes from a place of deep spiritual the word complicated stuff and I come from a place of just love the truth is I believe in the essentials of the Bible that God came he died for our sins so that we can have a relationship with our father and that he was the Messiah and that he loved me so much that he died for my sins so that I can have eternal life with my Heavenly Father. I believe in the essentials of the Christian faith, and I stand by them no matter what. What he and I struggle with is the non-essentials to the faith, the small, greedy stuff behind it. Those things I don't even participate in because... I'm called to do two things. Love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, and all my strength. And love my neighbor as myself. And sometimes I don't do very well in that second one. And I follow a lot of verses in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about how love is. And I will post the, all three verses that will be biblically sound to why I'm doing what I'm doing to help convey what I'm trying to say. But also, I will be attaching a video that's actually an advertisement for a upcoming Bible study I'm going to be particip participating on with my church, with, at my church on Wednesdays. And it's called The Book of John. But, um, there comes a point in your faith where you have to stop you have to consider what the person is saying. You have to pray about what they are saying. Consult a mentor, someone that's close to you. For me, I consult my fiance, my pastor, and my best, my best male friend. These three people are the only people I have gone to and talked to in detail about what's going on and given them physical proof of everything that's going on so it's in truth. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing to do. I don't care what anyone says. It's not gossiping. Gossiping is when you're saying things out loud and you're going around an entire church family talking ill of someone. Um, gossip is when you go on social media and you literally say their name and share every little dark little cranny secret they have and you do it with malice. Truth is I love this guy. And I don't appreciate how he's been treating me lately and my friends, and my, even my pastor. But I understand that the enemy will often use people during times and will use the enemy to crush them. And I don't understand what's all going on with my friend. But I have a pretty good idea. I've been watching social media a little more closely now ever since the fight on th Thursday to Wednesday, and I've been looking really close at his posts and his commentaries between him and friends. And I, I am scared for him. I am worried for him. I don't hate him. I'm not despised by him. But my actions lately towards him have been out of a place of hurt and out of a place of personal baggage and out of a place of trauma. Because I struggle with things. Truth is, I am prideful. Truth is, I'm stubborn. The truth is, 
I'm not a coward. I face my demons when they come. And sometimes I face them a little too hard. And I take things on a little too much. To a point where I get really hurt. Sometimes I think I can take on the whole world. My fiance and my pastor has to remind me quite often. Settle down. You don't have to take everything on. The truth is. At the end of the day. I'm just doing my best. I'm trying my best. And I think to God that that's more than enough. That That's good enough to him. As long as I'm being faithful and you know, my doing my best. I think God looks at me and goes, my good and faithful servant, thank you for doing your best. And lately, this week specifically, after the enemy sent this friend of mine to attack me and bring me apart and shred me to pieces, ruffle my feathers, as it were, it worked. But not in the way that the person attended. No, it reminded me, what happened was it reminded me of who I actually am. Lately, I've been a little depressed, a little discouraged. You know, I haven't been able to find a job since Little Creek and been struggling with my relationship with Tanya. And lately, I've been feeling like I'm a coward and feeling like I'm a loser and feeling like I'm a failure because I'm not able to do these things. But then, you know, God used this guy as well as the enemy. The enemy's intention was to bring me more down, and he almost succeeded. And weren't for having premarital counseling and having people in my church who love both me and my fiance. But God used this man to also remind me that I'm not a coward. That I am a child of the king. That I'm of the kingdom. That I'm loved. That I'm wanted. That I'm safe. That I'm needed. That I'm wanted. You know... That I that I'm not Batman, that I'm not this doctor. I'm not, I'm not some delusional freak that's doomed to have a life of depression, and anxiety and loneliness. God has been faithful, has been so faithful to me the past couple of months. That's not even funny. He's met every little need I've needed, lately, then in my entire life. He's provided me a beautiful home. He has blessed me with a wonderful fiance. He has blessed me with two cats that I love to death. He's blessed me with food galore. And yes, most of this financially is coming from my fiance. But it's because of God that I have someone that has blessed me, that loved me. He's provided me a good bed that I can finally sleep at night and actually get a good night's rest. He's provided me a job that so far seems like a good fit. Time will tell. I don't know. At this point, I've learned to just trust the process and trust God. If the job works out, great. If it doesn't, that's also great. I think both are great. I've walked away from this whole mentality of, oh, you have you need to focus on uh, holding a job for longer than a year or two. Only thing that does is proves that I can hold a job. I can do the same job every day for a whole year. And that has never been my focus. That never going to be my focus. My focus is to show up, do a good job, go home. That's never been the problem. The problem has been... Well, lately, it's been my attendance. But before that, I could have lasted at a little Greek casino and been there long term. And they may try to use this against me on this this week but my lack of ability to hold a job for longer than three to four months and the enemy tried to use my past and one of the things I had to remember is that I didn't really have much of a choice I either stayed at Little Creek Casino to the Jeep tied which was funny enough like half a month later where I leave Little Creek Casino invest in my time and energy into my relationship with Tanya and my church family and trust that God will provide everything I needed along the way. And he did. I have wanted nothing in the past four months. Hey, Felix. Yeah, you lonely. You want mama? Is that what's going on? You want mama? Well, mama's sleeping. 
Ja vaan. There you are. Hey, I love you, Felix. I don't know what Melody's doing. I'm taking a bath literally by the sink, but. You're weird. Yeah, so. Work is going really well. Um, tendon is going well. I haven't called out yet. I have had no reason to call out because all I get to do is literally do videos, sit down, have conversations, spend time with my coworkers, actually build a relationship with them. And for the most part, they just let me do whatever I need to do. You know, if I need to take a break and go do nothing for like a couple hours while on the ship, they're okay with that. As long as I'm, you know, having a positive attitude about everything. In fact, this is the weird part is, is that they encourage it because they want you to be calm and relaxed and be able to take what you've learned and actually apply it. There's a lot of stuff they've thrown at me in the past two weeks and they understand that. So we're taking our time only talking about one subject a day, whether it's for 30 minutes and then the rest of the day I just relax and head home. But they're very intentional about their teachings and they're very intentional about how, to, well, how they are trying to help me as a salesman. So I feel like this job is the perfect fit I may not be having the exact work hours I wish I could have, you know. If it turns out I have to sacrifice some church on Sundays, I'm willing to. But I, I feel like this is a good fit. It's a good starting point. I wrap my, ramp myself up to a point where I can make sales, and then financially I'll be just fine. Basically, physically I don't have to work as hard as I used to. Um, I'm to a point in my life where physically... I'm not able to work as physically as hard as I used to. There used to be a time where I used to be a freaking speedster, hard worker, dedicated. I mean, when I was at Little Creek Casino, for the four, three and a half, four months I was there, I was a really hard worker. I showed up at 11 o'clock at night. I left at 7 in the morning. I showed up, did my job, kicked ass, went home. On my days off, I would rest and recover, then go right back at it again. At one point, I was looking into martial arts. I was doing really well as a single young man at this point. But then God was like, hey, have a fiancé, have a woman. I know you've been really wanting this. Now, since I, you've shown that you can handle small things, here you go. Here's a big thing. So I was like, Okay. I think a lot of ways God was using Little Creek Casino to prepare me for time. There was this guy at Little Creek Casino that was the worst coworker I've ever worked with, ever. And during this entire time, I was able to love the guy, be there for the guy, and handle him. But like, there were some nasty fights between me and him. Not physical, but emotional, verbal. And my, at the time, work mentor and friend had to step in multiple times and tell me, hey, you did the right thing. You're doing just fine. He's in the wrong, really in the wrong. And like, I almost, he, I almost cost him his job because I wasn't willing to put up with his bull crap. But like, I think in a way it kind of prepared me for Tanya <laughs> because there's times where I have stuff like that going on with her and I have to remind myself that I love her, that I support her and that I'm here for her and that I care about her, you know, and that it helps, it helps. Yes, that we start something new. Um, we were having a pretty hefty argument about something yesterday, and instead of continuing to argue like we usually do, I stopped and said, no, 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 we're going to stop here now, we're going to pray, we're going to pray, we're going to hold each other, hug each other, love each other, we're going to stop this right here, right now, and talk like normal adults. So I went over pr praying over her and in our relationship, and we were fine, we were able to resolve. It was the first, it was the, probably the quickest resolve of a fight we've ever had. Ever. And then God used a situation on Friday between me and her where we had a really nasty fight. It almost brought us to a point of breaking up. Let's put it that way. It was a pretty bad breakup. Um, and then we both talked it out over hours. Then she decided to go in her room. I decided to sit in the landlord room for a little bit after we were able to calm down in our three hour discussion. She prayed and realized, holy crap, what have I done? I'm in the wrong. <laughs> Which confused me because I thought I was in the wrong the entire time. But anywho, um, she came out, apologized, and told me that God's told her to trust me. To lead her and trust 
me with the car keys. And I was like, right. So we're at that stage of the relationship where God's like, you, I trust you to take care of her, do what you need to do to lead her. And, you know, leading her as her fiance, as future husband, you know, it's, it's going to be rough. I know that for sure, but I love her a lot. And it's same with this friend of mine. This is the confusing pit bit that's a joy, but yet a, a painful, I don't know how to feel about it right now. It's still, it's been about, it's been 12 plus hours since that same person messaged me yesterday. He messaged me yesterday, not attacking me, not being aggressive, being calm and collected. It's like, hey, how do you feel about getting together with me and a couple and two of my guys and you and your pastor? We resolved this and worked this out. And he admitted that he's had a bit had a hand in everything that's been going on. And my reaction was, let me pray about it. Let me think about it for a couple of days and process this because this is I don't know how to feel about this right now. Because the same guy that was attacking me grossly, I mean it was nasty, lashing out like the worst that I've ever seen out of this guy to I'm calm and collected let's make peace and it's like I don't know how to feel about that after that just happened like I already forgave him for what happened here and I don't hold things against people I talk about things not because I hold things against people but because I want to talk about it in a way to help others not have to go through what I've been going through or if they do go through what I'm going through they can learn from my my life that's the whole point of this channel it's to help people learn get through com complex how people grow and change and it starts to lead by example so i told him let me talk about pastor let me pray about it today me and my pastor are going to pray about the situation um if he and i both agree to go through that uh won't me and him will contact said friend agree set up a date and time and do the phone call and then go from there um Honestly, I have not been obeying the Bible. The Bible has been very clear to talk to the guy personally, bring in a friend, doesn't listen, bring it to a pastor, which I did. We still don't listen, have nothing to do with him. That that part of that, nothing to do with him, I have a hard time doing that because I'm someone that really cares. So I'm willing to fight and argue and actually put out my feelings out there and actually try to win my friend's heart. You know, because here's the thing, and my fiance reminded me of this actually. If God hadn't, hasn't given up on you, I am not going to give up on you, or something like that. I like that. She actually texted it and then put it as her background on her phone, which I don't have her phone. But I'm someone that doesn't think he's God. I don't think I'm God, but at all. But I try to be as Christ-like as possible. And if God wouldn't give up on someone, why should I give up on someone? Because I feel like if I had to give up, then I'm not loving them the way I'm supposed to. Now, I am human. I am a white American male that's young. I'm 27 years old. I am a fool sometimes. And I say really weird things and messed up things sometimes. So I messed up. I bet even though I made this video, I probably messed up somewhere making this video. But the truth must be told. And the truth must be shared. Because truth is this is a common issue within the church that makes our church as toxic as it is. Brother against brother. Arguing over stupid politics and belief systems that are secondary belief systems that don't really matter. I'm sorry, but they don't. What should matter is that you are a Christian that loves God, that you are not just someone that's like, oh, I, I, I just have a Christian sticker on me and therefore I, I, I'm a believer in Christ. My goal is to be a disciple of Christ. And then take what I've known and share it with the world and make more disciples of Christ through sharing real life application while having fun on my channel at the same time. That's the whole point of the Fire Ripple Arc bet. In the name of it, you know, tossed on changing its name a little bit, but at the same time, I like the name. Fire Ripple is literally a, a stone. I love rocks. I love rocks. All rocks, including Fire Ripples. I literally collect rocks for the fun of it. 
And Arkbat is a perfect play of word between my love of Iron Man and Batman. Arkbat is basically my own thing. I love the Arc Reactor. It's the most interesting piece of fictional hardware I've ever seen in my entire life. That little tiny thing powers a lot of this crap. To me, in a way, it speaks to my heart, the arc, like the circle, the arc reactor, because it kind of reminds me of how the Holy Spirit is. We have this small Holy Spirit inside of our, our us, and, but it's so freaking powerful. And then Batman, you know, it kind of speaks to my nature of how I don't want people to go through what I've gone through. So I tend to want to be like Batman and want to help or stop or, you know, be a hero. That's honestly my heart, is I want to be a hero. Fortunately, Batman's fictional, and I have to be real, so. <sighs> Here I am making this video, and I'm just slightly looking at the camera while at the same time looking at my wall. It has everything that I love on there. The, 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 the bird mask, that's actually a reference to um, Moon Knight, which I'll be doing that for Halloween. The Batman, the new Batman mask. The Family Opera mask. My sonic screwdriver. And an axe, which was a gift from my sister Beth for Christmas. But it really reminds me of my, my past. I used to chop wood like crazy when I was younger. I mean, when I used to be really, I used to be really angry when I was younger. So often my parents would send me out to the back and leave me alone to chop wood. And I would chop woods for a long time. I would just chop and chop and chop. Put in the wedge, take the back of the sledgehammer. Not sledgehammer. Um, it's like an axe, but it's heavier. And go boom, boom, boom. Crack, crack, crack. Explosion. I used to enjoy the exploding part of it. And I would take the smaller pieces and chop them up, you know, once at some point, if I have time, I want to go up to my dad's place and chop wood for him. Him and new mom, as I call her, or mom at this point, uh, they're getting to age, so I might see if dad would be willing to pay me if I come up there on a Tuesday or Wednesday and chop wood for him, which I haven't thought about that yet. But, um... I'm grateful for what God's doing in my life. And I'm grateful for this situation. Yes, it was sucked. It was painful. It was emotionally draining. I was the most angriest I've been in a long time. And it came out. I was literally spewing out insults and attacking this guy after he attacked me for an hour straight. And it was not healthy. It was the worst thing I have done in years. And I felt sick to my stomach afterwards. That I had that much, I was that betrayed, that hurt, that I let him have that much power over me. And I think what happens, God, that the enemy and God used this person, one, to upset me. But I think God used him specifically to remind me that, hey, I've been letting this guy have free rent in my head for too long. And that I need to focus on him and on my relationship, not on trying to outdo this man's channel, with my channel. And that's part of the reason why I've down, down my videos a little bit. Um, I've made almost 600 videos. That's about 100-ish videos a month that I've been uploading. Um, I've been working on this channel for almost five months, four to five months, roughly. Um, just been making content left and right, and I think I've lost focus of why I originally started it, this channel in the first place. And the truth is, whether I liked him or not, part of it was because I was trying to outdo someone. Because I wanted to prove in a way that I was better than him. He has a habit of making me feel like I'm spiritually inadequate. And feel like I'm somehow spiritually a failure. And it sucks having that feeling. But truth be told, I've been really jealous of him. 
the way he talks about his videos, how he, how inspiring he talks, it inspired me out of the jealousy and inspired me to do my own collaborations with people. And I've been making beautiful, beautiful, beautiful collaboration videos. I have like eight videos up at the moment of me, Tanya, Gabriel, and Scott Benchiff. And at some point, we'll be getting Michael McAllister on board and Kylie Anderson. I think that's her name. She's going to be getting married to Jordan Ventura, a friend of mine, and some other people. But for the moment, I am taking a pause. I did the most recent collaboration about two weeks ago now. Or was it a week and a half ago? Something like that. So I've done collaborations recently. I drew. I do about one collaboration a month. Um, most of my focus has been on podcasts and gameplays. Anywho, um, I think I've said everything I need to say. It is eight thirteen in the morning, morning, and I need to um, eat breakfast, prepare for my work day. But I wanted to take this time to just kind of explain what's been going on this week, why I've been uploading videos, I and mean, some most well, some videos have been taken down. I want to make sure this biblical this video is biblical and actually was intentional. Um, I do want to say this is not a weapon. This is not meant for destroying people. Do not take this video and share this with with people as a way to say, "Hi, ah, you're the, you're the one that, you're the one that's the problem. You're the, you're the issue. You're the issue." No, 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 no. Use this to learn how to battle the enemy. You got to put on the full armor of God. Okay, you got to stop what you're doing. Take off your armor. Take off your own selfish ambition. Take off how you think about and put God's armor on. And that starts with studying the word. It starts with getting Christian mentor in your life that will love on you and empower you and give you the tools to help you battle such battles. Honestly, if I hadn't had the armor of God on, this week would have been way worse. I'm just going to be honest about that and blunt. I would have been way worse this week. I would have lost my fiance. I would have gone even further into some stuff I've been dealing with and been doing well fighting for the past couple months. It would have ended way worse than it's been. If I hadn't been obedient to God, I would have lost my fiance, who I love dearly. And that takes courage. It takes more courage to put on the armor of God and to love someone unconditionally when they hurt you. And now I understand on a deeper level why it's so important to have the armor of God on you. The next step is to stand your ground. Know the truth. Lead by the truth. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yesterday we had a a guest speaker come to our ch our church, and his message was so powerful. It spoke a lot of truth to my own life, and it was a blessing to hear it. I nearly cried at the end of the sermon. I wanted to walk up to say hi, but I was too shy. <laughs> and my fiance was like, "Hey, let's go up and say hi to him," because she knows how much I just love meeting new people and talking. But I couldn't. I just wanted to go home. And. Uh, Nearly caused cause another fight between me and my fiance, but I was blessed by his message. And if you want to see that, please look at the newest um, video I made and uploaded. Um, it's South Sound Church. It's a audio only black screen um, of the message that was yesterday at church. Um, I've been doing that partially because there's times where I want to listen to the message and I just, I don't like the distracting of just sitting on a screen and staring at it forever while listening to the message. Sometimes I like being able to do other things. So what I've done is I've started to bring my phone to church and I'll literally put my phone down, face down on purpose, have it record the entire message, except not as an audio, but as a video. And then I use that video instead of having to take a black picture and then take the audio and then 
weave it into it and upload from there. It's just too many steps, so I do it this way and it works. And now I can go back anytime myself and listen to it. And what I do is I give credit that this is South Sound Church, my church family, because I want to advance our church. I want to help grow our church and I want to help lead people to Christ. And if that means using my church to do it, that is a beautiful, powerful thing. And I'm a big advocate for my church. I love my church to death. I love my church family. I love my pastor and how he goes about the word. I appreciate how much my church is focused on actually living out the word instead of arguing and fighting over the secondary beliefs. Um, so we do have our moments though when that does happen. That's not a lie. <laughs> but we do mostly love on each other, lift each other up in prayer, and help each other. I think I've said everything I feel like I need to say for now. I'll probably talk more tomorrow. I'm excited. Today's, a, I guess, the second half day. But uh, I'm going to get going. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this helps someone out there. I want to pray this out. Lord, I pray over this video as I upload this video that someone out there is blessed and lifted up by this video and is comforted. Whether it helps confront someone that needs to deal with these issues or whether it's someone who's being attacked spiritually or whether it's someone in the middle that's being an advocate for this. I pray that this is inspirational for years to come that someone will be blessed by this and that someone will hear these words from my mouth and will be able to learn from this experience. Lord, I pray over the situation I've been dealing with lately, that today when me and my pastor get together to pray over the situation, that you lead us, that you, through the Holy Spirit, guide us to deal with this in a way that is biblical, that is out of love and patience and is a way that blesses you, Lord. Lord, I pray for the situation with the person that you work on their heart. And you bring them back to that where they used to be, which was a place of love. Lord, I miss my friend. I love my friend. I miss him. Yes, he makes me angry. It makes me want to lash out and say nasty things about him. But Lord, ultimately, I cannot fix him. You can, but I can't. I pray for my relationship with Tanya, that you keep growing us and helping us learn how to love each other more and more, and you help deepen our love for each other. I pray over this job as I go to work today that I'm able to do what I need to do and have a good attitude, learn and obtain what I'm learning, and that I'm not just wasting my time making these connections. Lord, please help me learn and obtain what I need to learn. But help me love my coworkers. Help me lead them to Christ in a way that is amazing. Lord, I would love it if all my coworkers somehow become Christian because of me. And they see my joy and they hear my stories. I pray this in your son's name. Amen. Thank you for watching this 40-minute video. I hope everyone has a good day. I mean every word I've said. I stand by what I've said. Anywho, have a good day.